Time now for our Muni moment. Interesting note out by Nuveen's new Muni chief, Dan Close. He was actually talking about, well, the positive outlook on the space, saying as far as valuations go, there is still plenty of room for credit spread compression and for also picking up additional yield by moving out on the curve. Joining us right now to talk a little bit more about this is Tom Koslick. He's head of public policy and municipal strategy at Hilltop Securities. Tom, we've spoken with a lot of muni managers over the last few weeks. I've yet to find one that is bearish. Why not? It's because credit quality right now is the strongest that I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, this goes back to a lot of that uh, federal relief, especially in 2021. Mm -hmm. The Rescue Plan Act uh, threw in about $650 billion to uh, public finance, state and local governments and other sectors. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've been talking about this golden age of public finance. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, uh, we saw upgrades, outpaced downgrades, 22. Yeah. Uh, we saw upgrades, outpaced downgrades from a credit perspective. And I'm expecting that to happen again this year as well. Uh, just to play devil's advocate, some would say, okay, that's a lot of fiscal stimulus that kind of saved uh, a lot of municipalities. There, Obviously, there were distortions because of the pandemic that shifted spending in a way that ended up being beneficial mm -hmm. to them. Uh, we all know that sometimes these municipalities sometimes take these legresses and mm -hmm. mismanage them mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. Are you anticipating that at all? Absolutely, because one of the things that we saw before uh, COVID is that there were some you know, meaningful state and local governments that were not structurally balanced. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're doing, even though some of those have experienced ratings upgrades, mm -hmm. one of the things that we're talking to investors about is to acknowledge that, look at their portfolios, and uh, especially in this, situ in this situation, mm -hmm. look for situations where they can find uh, other uh, trades to get into that might be a little more structurally balanced over the next kind of five to 10 years so they don't have to put up with the headline risk that could happen. Remain brought up government funds and of course um, there's a lot of COVID funds out there that have not been spent yet and the U.S. House has proposed maybe clawing back some of that money. Everyone we talk to seems to dismiss that as a real threat. Why is that? What's the what's the worry point though for this? So I, e even if there's a situation where that does happen, mm -hmm. I don't think that that would uh, cause kind of trouble to this theme, this uh, golden age of public finance theme, partially because a lot of these, a lot of the credit uh, improvement has already happened. I'm still expecting some credit improvement this year, especially in local government. Uh, but I don't, I think that really if that would happen, I think it might lower the ceiling, but I still am going to talk to investors about the fact that, you know, there's still a golden age of public finance and credit is still going to be strong. Okay. That might be the case, but then I look at something like um, public transit, and here in New York, mass transit ridership yeah. is certainly yep. an issue. It's come back a lot, but nowhere close to pre-pandemic levels. Isn't that going to be an issue, that that recovery or lack of recovery? So that's a different story. Uh, it's an important story, but it's a different story. Where mass transit's concerned, mm -hmm. uh, they're, on the one hand, I, I'm absolutely aware in some cases they're even talking about it as being a budget emergency, and I'm definitely acknowledging that. Mm -hmm. That being said, I think that especially in places like California and New York, that mass transit is too important to fail. Mm -hmm. I think that lawmakers are going to be able to find, it's going to be messy, but lawmakers are going to, are, are going to find uh, funding solutions. Uh, I want to just uh, pivot from that real quickly. Mm -hmm. only got about a minute left here. Uh, the SVB fallout. Yeah. There's still a lot of debt out there that is going to be sold off at mm -hmm. some point, and we know there's some pretty good stuff there. I think there's about six or seven billion dollars worth of municipals mm -hmm. that was on, that's probably going to be coming out to here. You think the appetite for that is going to be enough. Yeah, I think that there are two reasons of why it is that I'm not, I'm expecting that the market's going to absorb this process over the next couple of weeks, uh, and it's not going to negatively impact the market. The first thing is that uh, the, FDC, the FDIC has already talked about, they want this to happen on a gradual and orderly kind of time horizon. Mm -hmm. So that, number one. Number two, I think that the fact that primary market issuance has been down, yeah. it's like down $2 billion a week mm -hmm. compared to last year. So I think that that gives a lot of wiggle room with regard to um, you know, be, the market being able to absorb uh, the, the sale of these bonds over the next couple of weeks.